All right, y'all, so the plot thickens, man. Coffeezilla is actually going to be responding to KSI. So if you don't know, KSI came out himself and he basically brushed off this this thing, this whole, um, this whole crypto scam and all of that. He brushed it off. And then one of his fans actually dropped like a 40 page freaking essay with evidence and stuff like that, that KSI didn't actually pump and dump anyone, that it was innocent. And he has a track record and history of doing some of the stuff that that led to these pump and dump allegations. So yeah, um, CoffeeZilla is actually gonna respond to it. So this should be interesting. If we're gonna be diving into this response because it, it is, it's very interesting stuff here. It's very, it's very good. So um, let's see what's happening. Um, and yeah, let's get it. Hello, I'm making this video as a response video to a recent defense of KSI that came out posted by KSI himself as well. I, I think he may make a response video, which should be very interesting. But just to catch you up on all the lore, basically a crypto investigator named Zach XPT made three pump and dump allegations against KSI. Now, when this came out, um, I knew I had DMs open with KSI. So I went to him personally. I said, hey, this is really, you know, big. Uh, do you have any response? And he did. Basically, his the context is the accusations where he tweeted three things positively about three different coins, which we'll go through individually, and then he sold them. And so his response was essentially like, you know, I, I may have taken profit. Maybe some of these I didn't remember, but ultimately I'm dumb. I didn't know what I was doing, which personally I felt was a little unsatisfying. I was like, well, that being bad at crypto doesn't explain away the idea that you counter traded what you were saying publicly online. And I said as much, here's what he said. And here's my kind of conclusion to the whole thing. I said, and what I will say is like the, the whole KSI dumb thing doesn't work for me. I've said it in, in other videos, but it doesn't work for me because the guy has been able to become a successful boxer, a successful YouTuber and successful in music. Like anything that he puts his mind to, he's become successful in it. And crypto is something that he's ha had his mind on a while. So while he may not be able to read the charts, do technical analysis and things like that, I do 100% believe that he knows that if he says something, the price will go up. And then if he sells that sells when that happens, like he'll he will make a profit. So it's like, yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure about the the I'm an idiot defense, but yeah. That is much. I said, I'm just trying to understand why you traded the opposite way that you were saying on Twitter. And KSI replied this, because I thought I was getting trolled. Honestly, every time I tweeted something, the opposite would happen on the market. So I decided to tweet the opposite of what I was actually doing and still took an L. So he thought he was getting trolled. He would make a tweet. I mean, essentially what could have happened if we trust KSI at his word and believes that he has integrity. What could have potentially happened is he is a big figure. So when he says something, when he says something is is good, he's going to hodl it and things like that. What could have been happening is his reach is pretty big. That could have pumped the price of things. And then some whales who or people who are already holding that could have started just dumping it because he he, they, he pumped it enough to make them a lot of money. So maybe other people was making money off of it, or maybe KSI realized other people were making money off of it. So this is what he did to try to, so he could be the one making money. He's like, if other people are gonna do this anytime I tweet anyway, I might as well do it myself. I mean, we don't know. It, this really just comes down to someone's character, which we really don't know. We just watch KSI for entertainment. So it's like, it's hard to say. All we know for certain is he basically pumped and dumped. <laughs> like it's just the intent behind it. that That's really in question. Um, he bought, he tweeted something positively as it pumped, he sold. It's that simple. That's what he did. His act was a pump and dump, but the intentions behind it is what's in question right now. So just to be clear, KSI's story that he's going with is that he thought the market was against him. So he publicly said one thing while privately, secretly doing the opposite, which is kind of the definition of a pump and dump when you promote that to a big audience. You say you're going to buy to your followers while secretly selling. Whether or not it's a successful pump and dump, whatever pump and dump, that's what it is. Now, look, I understand that people are going to have conflicting ideas of whether this was malicious or not. And I think it's going to entirely depend on whether you think KSI's story makes sense. I'm just trying to provide full context while also giving you my opinion on that, which is that I don't really buy that he had no clue that tweeting one thing would positively affect the price in his favor. 
Okay, so, so that's basically the conclusion. I tried to include both people's sides of the story. And sort of as predicted, a lot of this came down to what people made of KSI's explanation, as well as like, what even is a pump and dump? What ethics should we hold influencers to? But um, more importantly, all of this came to a head when a fan of his released a big kind of defense of KSI post and KSI himself tweeted it. That's right here. He says an outsider's point of view in response to my post saying I confronted KSI pumping and dumping on crypto originally found by Zach XBT. His response is in my new video. So I want to run through this really quick. Um, I, I'm not going to go to the top of this post because the guy asked me he wants to stay anonymous because me and the poster of this article actually talked. I think we agree on some things. We disagree on interpreting other parts of it. I thought I do like the fact that he's willing to talk and, and get opposing points of view and he's not just going with anything. He tried to reach out to KSI. He he didn't just take the article at face value. He actually talked to the guy behind the article and had a conversation. I like that aspect. I like like that how um how diligent he is. I thought he made a good a uh, good point in one of the parts of this video that I'm going to bring up. I thought he also got something wrong, which he actually agreed. But ultimately, I think it's worth going through this thing and talking about his various arguments. Uh, basically, he goes through the context of KSI Crypto. He says, hey, this guy trades a lot. Basically, he's often wrong. He often changes his mind. And I think this part's really important uh, for the defense of KSI. He says he's also known for flipping his mind instantly. And that's why he's known as a shit poster, because he will post anything. One time he'll say he's bullish. One minute later, he's bearish. One day he'll say he'll hodl. One day he'll say, say sell everything. He is just like Jim Cramer. When he says he's going to hold a crypto, that crypto will go down. And when he says it's time to sell crypto, that crypto will go up. There's a meme based on this to do the opposite of whatever KSI is doing. KSI has acknowledged that several times. I will be sharing his tweets as an example. Um, and so all of this is sort of setting up the idea that like KSI is not a serious trader. He's not that good at trading crypto, which we talk about in the original video. But I want to flag this to start because I think this is a core disagreement that I already have, which is that. Just imagine for a second, because I think it is well known that he uh, KSI is like Jim Cramer. He kind of is a meme in the crypto space where people go, ah, he's bullish. Maybe that's a bearish signal or whatever. But my problem with this is fundamentally, it's not about him being a good or bad caller. My problem from the beginning has been like, this doesn't explain saying one thing, doing another. And I think the Jim Cramer thing actually illustrates this very well, because imagine for a second. Everyone knows Jim Cramer's a meme, it, like on Wall Street, you know, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Let's say Jim Cramer says, hey, I think Apple's going to go up. That's fine. He might be wrong. People will make fun of him. But let's say he trades against that idea. That's a pump and dump. That's not ethical to do. It doesn't matter if you are a meme on Twitter or whatever. Counter trading what you say as sincere is not right, <laughs> no matter what happens. So, so kind of like the thing he's setting up is like, I, but I kind of get the defense as well because KSI, he is a gamer, like, and maybe this is just a fan of me, but he's a gamer. He's used to playing around and messing around. So it's like, oh, the market's against me. Let me just do the opposite. I can see how a gamer could come to that conclusion. But then again, he's accomplished so much to prove his level of intelligence. It's like, you you know what you're doing. So, I mean, the the investor in me, I feel like this is full of shit. <laughs> like, I feel like that's a full of shit defense, to be fair. So, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, I, he, he definitely knows better, man. He definitely knows better. He knows what he's doing. But it also brings the question, he's smart enough to not, to, to buy, if he wanted to pump and dump, right, why wouldn't he just have a wallet that's not public? Like, why wouldn't he just, you know, have a friend do it for him or something like that? Like, why would he do something that can be tracked and traced back to him? If he wanted to pump and dump these things, like why would he, why would he, yeah, like why wouldn't he just do it anonymously and tweet stuff out, then sell under a different, you know, wallet? KSI is not serious. Like people don't take him seriously on crypto, whatever. But it's like ultimately, do even if he's like Jim Cramer, it's like doing this is unethical. Saying this is not the right move. Okay, so he gives some examples of this, etc. Uh, then he gets to the XCAD post, which will happen after a while. All of this is just, yeah, KSI says I'd be a billionaire if I did the opposite of my tweets, honestly, which is something he says in our conversation. That's what he sort of was saying is he's like, I was trying to do the opposite of my tweets because I thought they might go up or what go down. Um, 
So he says KSI shit poster. He doesn't know anything about crypto, blah, blah, blah. Um, so maybe it was a meme. Like, I could see how it could be a meme, a setup to a setup because he's tweeted stuff like this. Maybe he's just setting up, oh, I'm going to do the opposite of what I tweet and see if it works better this time. But are you really that slow? Do you really not see that you have potential to move the market? I mean, but I don't know what it's like to be that level of famous, really. So it's like, are you, he, he could still just be, nah, but he walks around with security everywhere. There's no way you're thinking in the mind of a regular person. Like, if I tweet this out, it's going to have no impact on the price. He knows who he is. It's like, you know, you're going to move, you can move a price to some degree if you tweet. So I don't know. You have to know because you know you can't leave the house without security. So why wouldn't you know if you put out a tweet, the price will probably rise? It's like, you know. I want to get to this point. Oh, he here he talks about pump and dump. Specifically, he talks about, hey, the price has to go up for it to be a pump and dump. I disagree with this. But either way, we'll talk about that because um, the volume for sure went up with the XCAD post. But I want to talk about this. He talk, starts talking about XCAD and this comes to like the first error in this document which is where he's talking about oh he claims that this guy posted and then he sold everything and oh but you have to understand that he constantly trades xcad don't you know that he constantly trades and in fact if ksi was doing a pump and dump why would ksi buy again at a higher price if he was doing dumping xcad and he brings up this screenshot in particular i don't know if you guys can see this he says uh he says jj tweeted here JJ starts selling for three to four days. And then they say, this is where JJ buys again. This is where JJ starts selling again. Buy high, sell low. Again, kind of saying this idea that during the time that he was selling, he was making these positive tweets. He was super in and out of this coin. Uh, this is just objectively not true. The guy misunderstood. And I think in good faith, I don't think he purposely did this, but he just misunderstood the differences between transfers and the get reward function. These were not buys. Like this part right here was not a buy. KSI received some XCAD, but it wasn't from buying it. Um, and then he continued to sell. So to be clear, the Zach XBT's argument is KSI publicly promoted XCAD one day and starts selling it, continues to promote it while selling it. And that is true. That is the objective facts. I mean, this thing says, he, he bought, uh, th this is just not true. The guy who wrote it even admitted it. He said he was thinking about taking it down. I don't know if he ultimately will. I mean, it is just like one major error. But this is the context that I want to explain with um, with the XCAD stuff is like, people are going to ask like, oh, what's the big deal? I think they're missing the forest for the trees. If you, it really comes down to, it's this simple. If you are a public influencer and you start tweeting about crypto, you shouldn't be counter trading your tweets. It's it's literally that simple. Or you're going to get accused of being a pump and dumper. I mean, I don't know how much simpler to make it. I, I said in my video, like whether people think it's malicious or not, like this just is the facts. You should not be counter trading your tweets. I don't even think people who would be defending KSI would defend that fact. I think the only defense is like, well, he kind of buys a lot of XCAD and then sells a lot of XCAD. But during that particular time when he was doing it. He was just selling. It was the day he tweeted, he starts selling and continues to sell even as he continued to tweet about it positively. And so I really don't think that's a good point. I I, I don't know. I guess that's just going to be up to your interpretation on that particular one. I then want to get to a point which I actually thought was better, which is on the earn um, accusation. Zach XBT says, Two NFT coins I'm very bullish on, Super and Earn. After um, hours after that, he sold three hundred forty nine thousand dollars worth of Earn. Right? Okay, so you shouldn't have done that. He shows the screenshots. Uh, then he says, okay, actually, the he says actually no. This guy says he actually bought in Super with some of that Earn money. Now I think that is relevant. I don't think that I'm not just going to wave that away and say, hey, that doesn't matter. I'm totally open to other arguments. And I think that's a good argument. The guy brings up that he bought Super, the other coin he's bullish on, during the same time he was selling Earn. Now, let me say, I think it's always going to be bad to say you're bullish on something and then to sell it. But I can definitely see that argument. So you're like, you can be bullish on this one thing, but at the same time, you want to take some profits or take some money from there and invest in something else. Cause he could have just been seeing something with super. So he's not, Oh, I, I need to get some money over here and I don't want to put in some new money. Let me, let me put, you know, 
Like, so I can see, I can see that. If you're buying into this other coin that you also say you're bullish on, I would say it's it's less bad. The intentions are sort of uh, a little easier to see there. So I actually want to give credit to this guy. I thought that was a really good point. When I was talking to KSI, he didn't bring up that point. He said he didn't remember the earned trade. Maybe that's why he didn't bring that up as additional. Well, to be fair, with all those posts, this guy this guy has 40 pages worth of proof. So if he's literally treat, tweeting and trading at this rate, he probably doesn't remember every shitty deal he does, which seems to be a lot of them if he's known as a meme for it. So, like I said, it, it is like the, the whole idiot thing is kind of working. It's, it's working for him, but it is hard to believe still. But, yeah. Context. But I wanted to say that because I think, like, it's important whenever you engage in these things, like, it's important to take people at good faith. Like, if they have a good point, you say, hey, that that's a fair point. It's a good point. So... Next, I want to talk about this one. I will not say this word. My mother <laughs> might be watching, but this is the token. He says, this coin is about to explode. One hour later, he dumps his remaining tokens for 25K. Uh, this guy acknowledges that this is basically a shitcoin project, but basically says like, ah, the price didn't pump that much. Hey, it wasn't that successful of a pump and dump, you know, et cetera. Um, I actually don't... Here's where I think a lot of people are just going to have conflicting opinions on this. I ultimately think everything is about like what ethics we should hold people to, not about the specifics of on this trade, this happens. Sure, whether or not the price goes up, it matters. But it's like ultimately in a lot of pump and dumps that are unsuccessful, the price doesn't like spike. Like I've been part of pump and dump groups on crypto before. A lot of the reason, number one, you pump and dump something is to get liquidity, not necessarily to have the price shoot up. And to be clear, I was in those groups for research purposes. That makes sense, actually, because liquidity is a huge issue. Liquidity is a, is a massive issue because he could have just been his funds could have just been trapped in there. There wasn't enough liquidity to just pull out. So the fact that he was able to get his money back out, that was that really just could have been the goal. So, yeah. I actually made a whole video about those groups uh, where basically like there were insiders who were actually scamming the people in the pump and dump group. It was this funny story. But in that case, the goal wasn't, hey, we're going to make this the coin skyrocket. These were low cap um, coins. So the point was actually to bring in liquidity. So what a good pump and dump is about is not always about price. Sometimes it's about volume in these smaller coins. And also, I would argue that an attempted pump and dump, something that is like tried, you know, trying to tweet publicly about something positively and then it not going as well as you thought doesn't make it any bet. Like it still was an attempted, right? It just wasn't super successful. But I don't think that actually changes the ethics of it that much. But the second part is, and just to be clear, I think what he says is that the value went up only by like a few hundred dollars or something like that. Like the, the price didn't like skyrocket, right? But ultimately, I don't think that's the most important thing in a crypto like this, I think it's always going to be like volume you drive to a platform because honestly, when a lot of people who are holding that coin see a coin is tweeted out by a celebrity, they also use that celebrity as a way to get exit liquidity for their bags. So it's like, it's not as simple as, hey, you promoted this thing and then you sold it. Did you like, like, uh, did the price skyrocket? Because a lot of times what insiders of the coin will do is also sell at the same time. If, if you see KSI just tweeted about your coin, you go, oh, it's a great time to sell because I've got a bunch of new exit liquidity coming in. So I wanted to just kind of share that context. And this is literally why I put this part in my video because I, I knew people might say this. Whether or not it's a successful pump and dump, whatever pump and dump, that's what it is. Yeah, it, it basically comes down to as simple as that. Like if a public influencer with a, a, a lot of followers promote something and they say they're bullish they say they're excited they say they're hodl gang and they sell that's a pump and dump what how much money they made i don't i don't really i mean i care of course but it's like ultimately that's not the problem in this yeah like i get it like if because if, if he would have made like a million dollars off of that play then okay yeah that's a big deal like that that's obviously that's fucked up but He's making shit amounts, really, or he's just making just enough to break even or, or like right around it. It's like he's not very good at pumping and dumping, but it doesn't change the fact that it's what is he's technically doing. And even if it's an accident, it's something that he should be vigilant of in the future. 
Um, which is why he said in the streams he's not really tweeting too much this bull run. And that's for that reason. In this case, the problem is that they're doing it. Which is why I actually want to share some of my DMs to KSI. Because this isn't just something where I was like trying to go, ooh, gotcha. I was also trying to communicate a, a point to him. And I, I don't know if he took this point seriously. But um, I just wanted to share this as additional context for this whole debacle. Originally, I didn't share it as part of our DMs because it was just me sort of sharing a personal point. But I think it is now relevant in the context of this whole conversation about like, should influ like, is it okay for influencers to tweet about coins and then do the opposite? I think not. And, and this is why I told KSI it wasn't. I just copy and pasted the screenshots in here to make sure I don't leak anything. I shared with him the volume calculation I had done based on an aggregate of a bunch of different crypto exchanges showing that um, XCAD's volume went up. Because one thing he told me, he's like, look, I, I hope people didn't actually take my tweets seriously. This is one of the, uh, one of the you know, comments he made to me. And I said, this X is XCAD trading volume. The red arrows are right after you tweeted, people dumped in money. Trading volume spiked by millions of dollars multiple times. Whether or not you realize it, you have insane influence more than most celebrities. Wielding it like this is bad, whether or not you have ill intentions. Wanted to share that data point with you, just so you understand, this is not a question of whether people take you seriously. They do take you seriously, whether or not you want them to. And I absolutely believe that. Now, people might respond to that by saying like, well, you personally, Stephen, don't you know believe in KSI. You don't take him seriously. And that is true. People have brought up tweets of mine like this uh, as sort of some kind of a gotcha. Like where I say time to sell to KSI saying, does this st thing still work? Clearly memeing a bit on the gut. But I'm not saying that I listened to his advice. I'm not saying that I was, you know, at risk of, you know, falling for this kind of stuff. My point is that among KSI's audience, who some are crypto savvy, I'm sure, some are not. Somebody's going to fall for this and go, oh, I'm in, man. You tweet about it. I'm in. That was my point when I was talking to him is like, okay, you're saying like, gee, I hope no one took me seriously. And it's like, yeah, okay, well, I'm not going to. People who have been like, you know, studiously looking at your trades might not. But just some random guy who sees you on Twitter, definitely. Uh, then we kind of had some like random misunderstanding about that point. Uh, so I'm skipping a little bit. But then I said he's going to respond to that that post just right here. I also said, what did you think was going to happen when you said, I'm bullish about earn? Did you did it occur to you that your followers might invest right before you sold? Um, he responds to my earlier point. Oh, okay. I didn't understand my bad. I just put it in my bio that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just like everyone else attempting to do crypto. I can't help that I have people follow what I do. Now, I just think this response is not acceptable when talking about finances yeah it's, it's very irresponsible it's very irresponsible but then again i have been in the finance space for a couple of years now especially publicly on youtube so i understand that a certain level of responsibility comes with being in finance ksi has been a gamer he's been in boxing and then he does a bunch of videos blowing money with his friends it's like he may not know how serious this is. He do, he doesn't have to. And for for him, he's been earning money so long, and maybe this is a somewhat of a defense. He's been earning money so long that money comes easy to him. He like for him, it's just a it's a game. It's another way to try to earn some money. And he he he's just a regular guy tweeting and doing regular shit like he usually does, but he doesn't realize that he's now moved into a market where real people's money and real people's lives are at stake with the decisions that they're making. And he's helping his own fans make bad decisions. I don't know if he's understanding it in that context. And but I can see I can see an argument for how he wouldn't understand it in that context. And and, and yeah. So it really just comes down to if you believe he has integrity or not. If you believe he's re he's really blind to some of these facts or not. So someone who's been in gaming, I know it was a transition for me understanding the rules understanding finance and stuff like that it's a big it's a big mental shift so i can see how you could be very dumb and uneducated in this area but i 
I think that some one thing is very simple. If you have a big amount of fans, you know that if you say something, it's going to impact things. So he shouldn't be too surprised by his impact. I mean, he's sold out shows before. So he knows when he promotes something, people show up. So he should know that when he drops a tweet, people will take it seriously and buy. So that is a lot of power. He has to be careful with that power. So I think that this was careless. I think even KSI's biggest crypto defenders who are saying, look, he didn't mean to do anything. He didn't, it wasn't intentional, you, you know, whatever. They're not going to defend counter trading your tweet and then say that's fine. I mean, I think everyone realizes like if you have a certain number of followers, you just have a higher level of responsibility when it comes to sharing financial tips. And you can't just go like, oh, it's not my fault that I have people follow what I do. It's like, OK, it might not be your fault, but it does become your responsibility. Right. And so doing this is a bad idea. KSI being on that KSI crypto account is a bad idea if he's going to be randomly talking about projects, saying he's bullish, he's bearish, and then doing the opposite of what he's saying in the tweet, right? Um, and then he also says to that earlier response, he said, I said I was bullish on a lot of things. Laughy emoji. I mean, I don't know. I just think uh, maybe KSI thinks like, ah, it's just like an alt account, you know, whatever it is, what it is. Like, no one's going to really take me seriously. It's like, People do. The people who know KSI. Which, that's a, that's like, obviously, being an investor, you think different. So, I can see, like, KSI just jokes around all the time, plays too much. He's just, he's literally just a character. He's a goofball. Like, that's literally what he does at all times. Like, he's very serious driven, and he's going to do whatever it takes to accomplish his goals. But he, he's, his goals ain't heavily thinking oriented. So, to is he capable of sitting here critically thinking about some of these things and putting it into the proper perspective that it needs to be in for him to understand why this is wrong? And I, I think that he's more aware now, and he hasn't, to my knowledge, he hasn't been tweeting. He said he stopped tweeting for this reason, which if he stops permanently and stops doing stuff like this, that would say that, oh, he didn't really mean to do it. He was just messing around. He 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 didn't know what he was doing. But, yeah. I think that he might just be messing around like he always does, not realizing when people's money is on the line. You can't do that in the finance space. Size crypto cat, they know like a lot of the context behind it. May think, ah, it's sort of like if KSI says something goes up, it might go down. But you're not going to tell me that no one takes him seriously. You're not going to tell me that it's okay if Jim Cramer goes out and he says, hey, this stock's great, and then he counter trades it. And so I don't see how KSI is that different. Yes, KSI is an influencer, right? But that also means, so like you could say like, oh, we should. KSI is, just, yeah, like, like I said, he's just a known, he's a known non-serious guy. So to to be to be tweeting things that all his fans do is roast him. Like his career is his fans roast him, calling him fat neek, all type of stuff. Like it's just, he's a big running joke while still being respected. It's weird how he has this crazy balance, but he's a big running joke. So that they, that's been his whole career. So I guess he has he has a not take anything seriously personality. So I can see how he would not know how serious something serious is. You know, to take him less seriously. That's true. But you should also accept the fact that Jim Cramer has more sophisticated investors listening to him. So that also it, it, the sword cuts both ways. KSI has a lot of people listening to him that only sort of like don't have a lot of crypto experience. Right. So. Yeah, but why would he think he has pull, pull, so much pull in the crypto space because he's not a finance guy? Why? So I can see how he would not know that he has the type of pull that he has in the finance space. But then again, he's a superstar, so you should assume you have pull everywhere. But yeah, I don't know. It really just comes down, this really comes down to his character and if you like what you feel about his character. I just wanted to provide all this additional context, respond to this guy's post. Uh, and, and I also wanted to say me and this guy have have talked. I, I don't think he was being. Oh, sorry. I was trying to show the screenshot of the scam investigation or whatever. I, I just wanted to respond to this. A lot of people were asking me about it. I think he made a good point specifically on the earn token or whatever. I still think it's not good to sell earn, but it's like it's whatever. I can kind of understand that trade a bit more now. But I think the rest of these actually aren't that good, aren't that defensible. And ultimately, look, if I could give away any kind of like point to all of this, it's that 
Influencers should not be talking about crypto. And they certainly shouldn't be counter trading their tweets. No matter what you think, like you might think, I don't have any influence. People think I'm a meme. People think whatever. There are also people who take you seriously. So I think, you know, in, I think a lot of people learn this during the bull run, but I think a lot of people have it. And like KSI coming that to coming back to this uh, KSI crypto account, I'm like, please don't do this. Why are you doing this? I, you know, I understand that he just wants to, uh, be a memer like everyone else. But if that's true, just be an Anon account. You don't have to be KSI talking about crypto. You can be an Anon account. You don't have to do this. What are you going to do for yourself except create problems when you counter trade your tweet and people are going to interpret that as malicious. Some people are going to interpret it as not. But ultimately, I think that is a call each individual has to make, as I said in my video. And that's not something you want up for debate. You don't want, want to have to have people like speculating like, what did it mean when he sold six hours after saying he was bullish? Did he mean it as a joke? Did he mean it? You know, even the guy, um, actually speaking of that, like one of the explanations for the, uh, this coin here, uh, KSI made another shit post about a shit coin because he thought it would be jokes. Again, that's one interpretation of that. Thought it would be. He profited less than $200. I think the added KSI sold his crypto and only profited less than $200. Um, so that's, I think that's a stronger argument too, having that part. Um, him who can make $200 probably within the first 10 minutes of dropping a video, like that's, yeah, that's kind of a crazy thing to do. Well, actually, and honestly, it's probably less than the first 10 minutes. Like, he could probably make $200 in the first minute or two of the video of dropping a video. <laughs> so it's like, is he really pumping, dumping, and risking everything for that? He jokes. Again. Oh, but that's the, that's the, that's that one, which that's the one where he probably just needed, he could have just needed exit liquidity. So yeah, I mean, the point still stands. Like, it shouldn't be up for discussion or debate. Like, if you don't do it, you won't be in these situations. That's one interpretation of that post. The other interpretation, I'm sure, made by other people is like, oh, it's a coin. This guy's telling me about a crypto coin. So ultimately, that's the update. I just wanted to cover this. I've tried to be fair to both sides while giving my opinion on the whole subject um, and, and like say like, yeah, OK, KSI might be bad at crypto. I don't this, think this is excuses what he does. I don't think this makes it OK to counter trade your own tweets. And I think ultimately, yeah, it was effectively a pump and dump for these different projects. Now, did KSI end up rich from all this stuff? No, because he lost everything on Luna, which is something we talk about in our video. Either way, I think as a general rule, no influencer who's not like a crypto expert should be involved memeing about crypto the same way they shouldn't be involved memeing about stocks. I also think that's a really bad idea. Which, by the way, is something that me and the guy who wrote this response agreed on. At the very end of our conversation, I shared with him, look, I don't think people like KSI should be sharing their opinions on crypto, especially if they're going to counter trade. And he agreed. So even the p people that I think I disagree with, we may not see the eye to eye on. Were these pump and dump scams? Were they unsuccessful pump and dump scams? Were they just KSI counter trading his tweets? However you want to define it. We at least agree on that point, uh, which I guess is enough for me. So anyway, I wanted to make this quick response. Uh, um, I guess I'll make a more full response if KSI responds in full. But for now, that's basically it. All right, yeah, this was this was a good video. Let me know what you all think, man. You all know I'm kind of like, it comes down to his character. And I don't know, I don't know him well enough. I, I wouldn't know. I don't watch him well enough. I don't consume his content enough to fully, fully know him and his character fully like he's always just seemed like a chill motivated guy to me but um yeah like i don't i don't know him too much so yeah, it really comes down to interpretation of who you think he is as a man let me know what you all think um be sure to drop that thumbs up subscribe and turn on notifications and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out fam